What do you do when your kids are upset? Mm. Mommy! Mommy! Angry. <laughs> Inconsolable. <laughs> and it's all your fault because you're getting divorced. Three British families are on a journey that could change their children's lives. They've all got one thing in common. Divorce. Will and Franny's mum and dad divorced last year. The Walkers separated a few months ago. And Tara and Colin Hibbert told their children a week ago that they're splitting up. All the children are struggling to adjust. And that's why the families have come to Houston, Texas to meet a specialist divorce counselor. My name is Christina McGee. This is a pro-children seminar. We're going to spend a lot of time this morning talking about kids and how we help our children move towards a healthy, positive adjustment following divorce. It's Christina's job to help families cope with the fallout from divorce. It's not bad. In Texas, warring parents can't get divorced unless they attend classes like hers. Divorce isn't about good or bad or right or wrong, it's hard. It's going to be hard for you, and it's going to be hard for your kids. However, how we get through the hard stuff is going to make a big difference for our kids. There's nothing like this in the UK. And over an intensive one-week course, our British parents will learn some painful lessons. I think you may feel like you're shielding Will by, you know, saying maybe he shouldn't have contact with Dad. I think the hurt would still be there. Mm. When you say, we really need to go mm. through with this, it's going to be hard for you. You don't have to have the stiff upper lip and all that. No, I know. It's yeah. okay. I am just overwhelmed by everything at the moment. <sighs> for some, it's going to be an uphill struggle. I'm slogging my fucking guts out to do what Christina asked us to do. To be polite to him, to not have a fucking argument with him, to communicate with him, and he can't even fucking do it properly. The kids will start to reveal their true feelings. I'm worried that when Dad gets married next year, Mum's going to be upset. And what is this one? Can you tell me about this one? Dad hates Mum. You think that your dad hates your mum? and accept their parents' divorce. You'll still be a family, mm -hmm. just in a different Families way. Families are forever. Families are forever, that's right. Before they went to America, Christina McGee came to Britain to meet our three families in their home environment. In the UK, 170,000 couples divorce each year, leaving hundreds of thousands of children to pick up the pieces. When I work with parents, I try to come in as a neutral third party. I'm not on mom's side, I'm not on dad's side, but I try to be a voice for the children. I'm not an advocate of divorce. I feel like that parents' first responsibility is to do everything that they can to have a happy, successful marriage. If that's not possible, then I think the next best option is for them to divorce with integrity. And that means that while the relationship is ending as husband and wife, they continue to be the best mom and dad that they can possibly be. Christina's on her way to meet a couple who urgently need her advice. What about the chicken there? Not too Tara and Colin Hibbert have only just decided to divorce. They're still living under the same roof, but have yet to tell their kids about the split. This is a big situation where I am going to blow the family apart, but hopefully it will be a a small contained explosion that we can get over. <laughs> They're in, basically in the dark at the moment. I mean, it's just a case of working out how we're going to do it gently and slowly and softly. So long as we're there to catch them when they fall, then I think that's all that matters. 
and be there every step of the way. The Hibberts married in 1992. After five years, Kira came along. Aidan arrived a year later. A big mortgage kept Colin working long hours, whilst Tara increasingly felt trapped at home with two young kids. There were no rows. They just drifted apart. I knew things weren't quite as they were, but we still had a loving relationship and still did things together. And it was, it was a shock to me when all of a sudden she just said, oh, I don't want to be with you anymore. That was a shock. What's that? Is that yours? Yeah. It's not. Yes, it is. Are you sure? Yeah. They had marriage guidance counselling, but it didn't work. And Tara is now insisting on a divorce. I love him, but I'm not in love with him. And I can't keep living a lie. My wife, my best friend, and my children. What else is there to lose? And my house. Everything I've worked for. There is nothing else to lose, is there? Early this morning. Yeah. It's the front door. That is. Yeah. The Hibberts hope that with Christina's help, they'll be able to divorce without doing their kids any lasting damage. Hello, Hello. I'm Tara. Nice to meet you, Tara. And you. Christina. Hello, come in. Hello. Colin. Hi, Colin. Nice morning. to meet you, Christina. Hi. Aiden. Come in. Aiden. He's done shy. Oh, I'm <laughs> being bashful. That's okay. I can meet him later. That won't last long. No, no. <laughs> it usually doesn't. No. And right. Kira's upstairs. She's a bit moody. She had a sleepover last oh, night. Oh, so, so she's a, a tired. sleepover, yeah. right? Yeah. Where they really don't yeah. sleep too much. <laughs> what would help me is if one of you wants to spend some time with the kids, I would just like for us to have a place where the kids may not... Mm -hmm. They, they won't yeah. overhear what we're no, discussing. No, no, okay. And mm -hmm. if you have coffee, I will take that coffee. Right, okay, sure. <laughs> How do you think they're going to handle this? I haven't got a clue, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. So are you ready? Yes, I am. I am ready. Because it's, it's not a decision I've taken lightly. It's something mm -hmm. I've thought about for years. You know, because it's not just about me. Mm -hmm. and three others I've got to think of. Mm -hmm. And I know Colin's big enough and ugly enough to look after himself, but the children, you know. It is really how you relate to one another that's going to make mm. the difference for your kids. I guess so, yeah. Because mm. parent conflict is one of the largest determining factors in how well kids mm. are going to fare. Yeah. So I try to help parents minimize that Great. as much as mm. possible. Um, there won't be any way to take away all the hurt. No. It is no, going to hurt. Yeah. It is going to be hard. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes as parents, we feel really guilty about that. Yes. But feeling guilty is not going to help your kids. No, no, it's because not. Because they're still going to need you. Mm -hmm. They're going to need you to be present and supportive. Yay! Anybody up here? Hello? Before she can advise the Hibberts on how to tell their children, Christina needs to assess them. Yeah! <gasps> You're so very tricky. First up is six-year-old Aiden. Wow, that is a lot of toys. That's quite a big bear. Where in the world did you find such a big bear as that? My nanny gave it to me. Your nanny gave it to you. That bear is almost as big as you are. What's its name? Fuzzy. Fuzzy. That's a great name for a bear. Because he is fuzzy. Because he is, oh, he is very fuzzy. What did your mom and dad tell you about me? Person from America. Do you know where I live in America? Houston. Wow, you're really smart. What do you know about, do you know anything about Houston? No. No? We have mostly cows. Cows? Cows, yes. And Indians? cowboys and horses. No, we don't have many Indians. Not even blue Indians. Not even blue Indians. I'd love to see you draw Who first. Who would you like me to draw first? I don't know. Who would you like to draw first? Dad. Okay. Draw me a picture. Dad? Should I draw him in his best shirt? Oh, absolutely. I think. What does his best shirt look like? He's got pineapples on it with a blue. Oh, really? I'm not very good at drawing pineapples because it's really hard to draw. Mm. Well, Seven-year-old Kira's drawings name. suggest she hasn't picked up on her parents' decision to divorce. All right. He has quite spiky hair. I was noticing that. 
my mom. Mm-hmm. Are you happy in this picture? Yep. Oh, yeah. So is my mom and dad. Mm-hmm. But if Kira and Aidan are to get over the divorce, Colin must first come to terms with it. So who, in your opinion, initiated the divorce? Oh, Tara did. How do you feel about that? Gutted. Mm -hmm. Really gutted. What do you think it's is going to be hardest? Not seeing the kids, really. Mm -hmm. Not having them come bouncing in the morning, jumping on your bed and stuff. As far as I'm concerned, I don't get enough time with them and I haven't even split up mm -hmm. yet. So mm -hmm. like, Christ, that's going to be difficult one later on because I, I, it's the main thing I'm going to miss. How do you think I can help you? With the children, really. Mm -hmm. The emotional distress, not just for the children, but for me, how I will handle it. Mm -hmm. And then, so I won't pass it on to the kids. We won't make them dysfunctional later on, really. With your children, what might be an obstacle for them is that there wasn't a lot of conflict. And so it may be really hard for them to understand if the two of you are working together and getting along really well, mm -hmm. why does this have to happen? Yeah. Why can't things stay the same? It's not just the kids. <laughs> it's me as well. <laughs> One of my big concerns in this situation is that the kids have not been told. More often than not, kids know more than their parents think. Oh yeah, but is it better to do it instantly, or is it a better to do it gradually? And I think it? once parents have made the decision that they need to, to go ahead, mm -hmm. make the move, mm -hmm. instead of, because I think in taking your time and doing it gradually, mm -hmm. it's kind of feeding into that hope that maybe this isn't really going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so... Bite the bullet. Just do it. Whilst the kids play upstairs, Christina advises the Hibberts on how to tell them. Keep it pretty short and focused. You don't want to overwhelm them with information right away. And I think they need to hear that this decision is a decision that you didn't come to easily. That you understand it's going to be really hard for them. And you're sorry that it's going to be hard for them. But you feel that this is what you need to do. And quite possibly they're going to ask you why. And I think the two of you need to come up with that answer together. We felt like we'd be a better mom and dad in different houses. We've grown apart. We feel different ways. But just a very straight, simple answer for them. Okay? And is it best to keep asking how they're feeling? Well, what I would do is I would leave the door open. I would say, you know, a lot of kids have a hard time when their parents decide to divorce. Mm -hmm. The most important things you need to know is that the love that we have for you is never ever going to change because kids will wonder if you're going to leave each other, if you're going to divorce each other, does that mean someday you'll divorce me too? Mm -hmm. And so they need to hear that the love you have for them is not changing. I mean, I'm actually prepared, ready to do it, almost, not immediately, but in the next day or so. When we start, I'm sure it'll just flow well, in actual fact. Well, I would suggest practicing a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> The next family on Christina's list live in Sussex. Theirs is a classic absentee dad situation. In Britain, courts usually decide that children should live with their mothers, and 60% of fathers lose virtually all contact with their kids within three years of divorcing. When a divorce happens, children have every right to have a happy, healthy relationship with both their mom and their dad. But more importantly, parents have a responsibility to make sure that they are supporting their child's relationship with the other parent to the best of their ability. <laughs> Ten-year-old Franny Butler lives with her mum, Sue. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> Child. Her dad lives in Holland, and Franny's only seen him twice in the last year. I do miss him, but I don't like going to Holland. I do want to see him more, but I wish he'd just come over here instead of me having to go out there. Franny's little brother Will is seven. Once a month he flies out to visit his dad for the weekend. Do you miss Will when he goes to church? No. no, not one bit. <laughs> do you sometimes, Fran. No, I don't. Yes, you do. I remember once you went for a week and you, you were crying because you I missed know. me. No, Mum. Ah, uh, and me. 
Okay. I miss you. Even though Will and Franny's dad left home four years ago, their parents have only recently divorced. Rupert and Sue Butler tied the knot after seven years together. We were the couple. We were very happy and um, we both were heading in the same, same direction, wanted the same things. And when I said my marriage vows, I thought it would definitely be forever. We'll raise our glasses to Sue, my lovely new wife. <laughs> <laughs> a year after the wedding, their first baby arrived. He was over the moon when Franny was born. Absolutely over the moon. But then he disappeared. I think I had her at five o'clock. He disappeared to go and celebrate with his friends and didn't return until about five o'clock the next day. Will was born three years later. We were both very content in our lives, but and this is the crux. We were both very content in our lives, but our separate lives. Actually looking at our relationship, it was, it was crap. And then I started working away a lot. I spent a lot of time in Scotland. And then started seeing this, this girl quite regularly. Yeah, she was like a, a flame and I was like a moth, you know? She phoned me and said, hi, my name's M Melanie. Um, I don't think you know me, but I'm Rupert's girlfriend. And he was just like, oh. <laughs> um, and Rupert lives here with me and my daughter, and we've been living together for a couple of months. And I've only just found out about you and your children. I looked at my relationship with Sue, this Scottish girl. The Scottish girl won. Why? Why? I haven't been a horrible wife. I haven't let myself go because I've had children. I let you go out, you know. I don't say to you, you've got to be here all the time. We live in a nice area. We've got everything. We've got two lovely children. Why? I just, that's the hardest thing. And even now, that's still the hardest thing. Sue isn't the only one finding it hard. Four years on, and the kids are still struggling to adjust to their parents' divorce. Today, Will is flying out to Holland to spend the weekend with his dad. How do you feel, Will, when you say goodbye to me and you have to go? Quite sad. Do you? Because I'm leaving my mum. Would you like to be known as William or Will? Uh, Will. Will? Okay. Have you travelled with us before? Yes. Yes. Lots of times? Thank you. Bye. I think it'd be easier if Franny was with him because she's older. You think his Will's been doing this for three years? He's been doing it since he was four. But then Franny did used to go with him then, so it wasn't quite as hard. But in a way, it was harder for me because at least I know I've got Franny at home now instead of going home to an empty house. Come then. Up until a year ago, Will's sister was happy to fly out to Holland with him but now she's reluctant to visit her dad. Me and his girlfriend had like an argument, but really quite a big argument, and so they were gonna send me home because I really didn't wanna stay there. That was when I went out for a week, and so I never wanna go for a week again, but I don't know why. I just don't like going for weekends. I don't know, I'd prefer it if it was just like me, Will and Dad spending time with each other and she could stay at her mum's or something. Okay. 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 You go back and wait at the desk. Okay. And they'll let you know then. Okay. You ready? That's really horrible. That's the bit when I walk away and I think. Really horrible thoughts about Rupert and what he's done, and because this shouldn't be happening, you know, we shouldn't be split up. Bye, bye. 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 Nowhere I can see him. There he is. There he is. 
but the excitement is short-lived. Three days later, and as usual, Will's landed home with a bump. Will, please don't cry, darling. <laughs> Do you always feel like this when you come home from home? Yeah. Because you miss daddy. Because you're used to being with him, and then suddenly you <laughs> come back. Do you think we'll have to tomorrow? I don't know. That's okay. Why do you want daddy? Because it's fun. Because it's fun when you're with daddy. And you don't have fun when you're with me. No. I don't know how I can make things better, sweetie. Sue wants Christina's advice on how to deal with Will's distress and Franny's lack of contact with her dad. Hello. Hello. Hi, Sue. Christina. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. This is Franny. Christina. Hello. Hi, Franny. Nice to meet you. Hi. And uh, William's down on the trampoline. Well, oh. come on. He looks like he's having a good time. I heard you like to ride horses. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been riding? Six years. Oh, my goodness. Yes. You must be very good. <laughs> yeah, I've got a horse. You do. Are you going to say hello? Well, this is Christina. Hi, hello. Will. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Was there a good place for us to maybe sit down and spend some time talking? Yeah, I'm sure. We can go in the lounge. Okay. Right. Why don't we do can that I then? Get your drink or anything? Oh, a, cup of tea? Tea? a cup of tea would be great. Okay. Thank I'm you. A bit busy at the moment. What do you feel are like the primary issues? The children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only issues. I feel Rupert should be involved more in their life. Mm -hmm. William really misses out on not having Rupert around. Now Franny's older, we, do, we go out riding together, we go shopping together. Mm -hmm. And I think William needs somebody to do the boy things.